All right, let us begin. Let us pray. Living God, you set the stars burning, started the earth spinning, and breathed life into dust. You, who began all things, know how afraid we are of the end. Let us hear in today's dreadful promise, to dust you shall return, the echo of another, that through the cross and empty tomb, you bring us all to vital, abundant life. Amen. This service marks Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, and Lent is a season when we prepare for the celebration of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. On Ash Wednesday, we begin with an act of public confession. We acknowledge that we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory and repent and return to our loving creator. Acutely aware of our failure and frailty, we express our utter reliance on God's grace. During this service, you will be invited to self-impose ashes. If you didn't pick up a little jar of ashes from the church, you can use ashes in your fireplace. You can use some dark eyeshadow. You can get some dirt like Pastor Katie did. She has a cup of dirt with her in the car today. <laughs> and um, anything that might symbolize the, the dust that we came from and the dust that we will return to. So welcome to worship. Katie looks frozen, so I think I will uh, take on her part. <laughs> Maybe she'll get back in a minute. This Lent in worship, we'll be focusing on vital signs, vitality of a healthy faith and a healthy church. God is the one who created us from the dust of the earth and breathed life into our human bodies. God is the one who redeemed our lives through Jesus Christ who showed us that abundant life is actually much bigger than our own small selves. God is the one who renews our life through the Holy Spirit, revitalizing us and reforming us into something new. Because our whole lives be belong to God, we can come to God with our full selves, the good, the bad, and everything, everything in between. So something for you to consider what are the behaviors, actions, and inactions that are keeping you from full vitality these days? What mortal, material, and fleeting things might you ask the breath of God to blow away this Lent so that you can live the abundant life God created you for? We will begin in silent confession as we reflect on these questions, offering these prayers to God, and then we will join together in a prayer of confession out loud. So let us pray. Together, let us pray. Holy God, your hand has touched the dry bones of our faith. Your word has breathed my life where there was death. Your spirit, your spirit raises us up from where we lay. Your love brings us home. Forgive those things we have done. Which have, which caused, have caused you sadness and those things we should have done that and those things we and those should things have we should have done, done that, that would have brought you joy. 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 In, both, in both, both we have failed ourselves and you. 
bring us bring back, bring us back, back to that place, place where, where our, our journey, journey began. began. When, when we, we said, said that we would, that we would follow, follow the way, the way faith that you first, first, first trial. Create in us clean hearts, hearts O oh God. God. Revitalize, Revitalize our, faith. our faith so that, so all, that all we say, say and do, and do brings, brings glory to you. To you. you. And reflect, and reflect, reflect your, your great love, love for the world. world. Amen. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from Psalm 103. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Be at peace. So now we are going to read Psalm 103, verses 8 through 18. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Katie and I are both going to speak and um, I'm going to open up. <clears throat> Ash Wednesday is a day where we pause and contemplate our mortality. We humans, we sometimes get a little big for our britches. We think we're in control of things. We think that getting our way matters the most. We think we have all the answers. Ash Wednesday <clears throat> is a dose of reality. Today, we remember we are mortal. Our days are like grass. We flourish and then the wind blows and we're gone forever. Think of your parents' names. Think of your grandparents' names. Think of your great grandparents' names. Your great great grandparents names many of us many of us know precious little about our great great grandparents not their names or their preferences or their passions because they lived just a hundred years ago we live but their lives are now completely gone life is indeed fleeting some Ash Wednesdays, we especially need this reminder that life is fleeting. But I'm not so sure that that's true for Ash Wednesday 2022. In the last several weeks, Russia attacked Ukraine, and we see images of death everywhere we look. Legislatures here in the US are attacking young people who just want to be themselves rather than who others tell them they are. And this seemingly nonviolent legal act will surely lead to deaths by suicide. My chaplain colleagues are deeply exhausted because every single shift they are comforting families who have lost loved ones. 
Yet somehow, even though we are surrounded by death, our own mortality slips our mind. People who have a loved one under hospice care are unfailingly startled when that loved one does die. And today, when I walk around in the world and I see the mark of ashes on people's foreheads, I'll be startled, suddenly remembering that yes, this is Ash Wednesday. Our ability to be startled, be surprised, has saved our lives over the years. Uh, run from the saber-toothed tiger. Run from the erupting volcano. Run from the person whose anger can't be predicted or justified. So I suppose being startled by so much death around these days might just spark some behavior in us that helps us to live. May the stark images from Ukraine and from the ICUs continue to startle us, may continue to remind us that while our lives are precious, they are also fleeting. We have 40 days in Lent, 40 days where we can focus on living fully, 40 days, as Psalm 103 says, to be merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. 40 days to have compassion, to keep God's commandments, and to be tender, as tender to one another as God is to us. Amen. My thoughts are similar to what Jody has shared the season of Lent as a congregation, we are focusing on vital signs in our shared faith journey. Signs of life, signs of health. Uh, you can see some signs of life behind me. I am sitting in my car, obviously, in the, the parking lot to pick my child up when school is out in just a few moments. Um, and surrounded by these signs of life. I have spent a lot of time with my colleagues, with Session, recently working on these vital signs. And so today feels a little bit jarring to begin on Ash Wednesday with this proclamation of death. You will die one day is the message of today. You are dust and to dust you shall return. And as Jody said, we feel that. We know that, especially this year, the ever present, present nudge of death, the reality that all of, all of this is short-lived in the grand scheme of things. We've seen 5 million deaths, preventable deaths from the COVID-19 virus in the past two years, a fifth of them Americans. We've seen the evolution of the most vitriolic climate of political and social division in living memory, and we bear witness to violent insurrection at the heart of our government painted over as legitimate political discourse. We have seen and heard firsthand experiences of systemic and individual acts of racism now played out in real time on cell phone recordings across the internet. And we are now witnessing the systemic erasure of history that would teach these stories so we aren't doomed to repeat past failures. And we watch as one sovereign nation invades another and we weep and pray with the people of Ukraine for the refugees fleeing in terror and the ones who remain behind. We see photos, images indelible in our memories of mothers holding children covered in the dust of bombed out buildings. And we say to one another, you are dust and to dust you shall return. So on this day, more than any other, we are invited, we are compelled to claim that dust for ourselves, for it is ourselves, to embrace it, to not run from it, to let it streak down our faces mingled with the tears of grief and rage and exhaustion and to not wash it off, at least not right away. 
then and only then might we move from death toward life. Then and only then we might finally stop doing everything in our power to fight or avoid the ever looming specter of death in our midst. And once we've stopped fighting or fleeing, we can just stop and be and be still and know that God who breathed life into this dust once before can and will do it again. And in fact is doing it even now, even today, God is breathing life into this dust, into this grief, into this rage, into this apathy, into this anxiety, into this impatience, into this fear, into this self-righteousness, into this selfishness, into this self-doubt into this self. Breathe, God. Even now, even here, breathe into this dust and make us live. May it be so. Amen. Friends in Christ, every year we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lent is the time that we prepare for this celebration to celebrate and to renew our life in the mystery of Christ. So we begin our journey toward celebration with death, with the sign of ashes. This ancient sign speaks of the frailty and uncertainty of human life and marks the penitence of this community. So we are invited following the example of Christ to observe a Holy Lent by self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by works of love, by reading and meditating on the word of God, to examine the places in our life that could be more vital and seek ways to let go of that which is draining life and to embrace that which increases our vitality. So let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and assurance, for it is by your gracious gift that we are given the vital signs of life together. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So now is the time in the service where we will impose the ashes. Um, You can impose them on yourself today, or if you are worshiping with another person, you might choose to impose them on one another. Um, I will caution you, if you are using real ashes, never mix them with um, water. So if you've done that, don't put it on your skin. (laughs) It's oil or dry. And we will impose the ashes together and say, we are dust and to dust we shall return. So if you're ready to impose the ashes, join me in saying that together. We are dust Dust. and to dust we shall return. What wondrous love is this, O my soul, O my soul? What wondrous love is this, O my soul? What wondrous love? 
We are going to close today. Our benediction and blessing will be a poem, one of your pastor's favorites. Um, this is Blessing of the Dust by Jan Richardson. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made and the stars that blaze in our bones and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Amen. Go in peace, friends.